pi. In this lesson, I want us to compare the internal structure of the Earth with what we think we know about some other planetary bodies. I say what we think we know because we've got a reasonably good idea of what's actually uh, deep down within our Earth. We know we've got these four concentric layers. The solid iron ball of the inner core, the liquid iron of the outer core surrounding that, the huge layer of uh, rock uh, that makes up the mantle, and the very thin um, layer that we live on as the crust. Now we've got fairly good evidence for this from meteorites, from uh, earthquake waves passing through the Earth. But when we look at other planets, we can start to see uh, perhaps some similarities and some differences. The first of these we need to look at is the Moon. Now when we start looking at how the Moon forms, we'll see that the Moon is actually a bit of the Earth that got knocked out into space. So we'd expect there to be some um, fairly significant similarities between the Moon and our own planet. Can you identify what they are? There is a word on there that you won't have come across. Anorthocytic. Anorthocyte is a type of um, igneous rock that's made of a mineral called... Uh, which is part of the feldspar group. We do find examples of that here on Earth. But it's a, a lot more unusual on Earth than it is on the Moon. What are the differences as well? What can you work out? Earth is often um, connected to Mars we think there are some real similarities between what's happened on the surface of Mars. Which we're going to investigate a bit later in, the, in this theme. But what are the similarities and differences between the um, insides of these planets? Now this is something we've, we're sort of speculating on a little. Notice the word possible appears here quite a lot. It's only fairly recently that a rover's landed on Mars to try and measure uh, some of the Mars quakes that occur to try and work out what what's actually happening below the surface. Finally, I want to compare with one of the outer planets, the gas giants. These are very different in a lot of ways to the um, inner planets of the solar system, like Earth. But how? How are they similar? And how, crucially, are they different? So for each of these planets, can we fill in uh, the similarities and differences between the internal structure of each of these planets, or planetary bodies, should I say, compared to Earth? Okay, so have a go at that now. Complete the boxes on page 7 to compare Earth with each of those three planetary bodies. See what you can come up with. Okay then. That's all very interesting stuff. But how do we know? How do we know what's deep within the Earth? We can't drill down there. Those rocks don't really make it to the surface. So how do we know? 
The answer is in meteorites. The meteorites that we find uh, landed on the Earth are bits of uh, material that didn't quite make it uh, into planets. For it's the same stuff that made up uh, the planets in our solar system. By searching for meteorites and analysing their composition, we can work out what the deep Earth is made of. And in particular, places that we find meteorites are Antarctica, North Africa, Oman. 90% of the world's meteorites are found in those locations. Just because in places that are either covered in ice and snow, like Antarctica, or that are deserts, like um, North Africa or and Oman, it's easier to spot the rocks that don't fit in. In other places, they can be really hard to identify. Watch the video on Antarctic meteorites that will explain a little bit more about it. But what I want us to do is I want us to link meteorites with the composition of the Earth. Now, there are three types of meteorites. We have what we call stony meteorites, iron meteorites and stony iron meteorites. Each of these are made of different materials and they link it back to the uh, layers within the Earth. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to work out the density of each of these types of meteorites. Because it's that density that will allow us to see where these meteorites actually relate to in the Earth. Remember density is mass divided by volume. Be very careful with the units. Make sure you convert all your units into the answer that you want at the end before you do any calculations. So this is on page 8 of your Theme 2 booklet. Press pause. Have a go at those calculations now. Once you've done that, can you then link those meteorites to the layers within the Earth that they represent. Have a go at that now. Okay then, let's see what you've come up with. So I ask you to work out the density of these. Let's start with the stony meteorite. There's a mass of 294 grams, a volume of 82.6 cubic centimetres, which gives us a density of 3.6 grams per cubic centimetre. The stony iron meteorite has a mass of 318 grams, a volume of 66.8 cubic centimetres, and that gives us a density of 4.8 grams per cubic centimetre. Finally then, the iron meteorite, it's got some beautiful crystalline patterns in, the, in those iron meteorites. They're called Widman statin patterns. Shows they cooled very slowly. But here we have a volume of 1,390 grams, uh, sorry, a mass of 1,390 grams. We need to convert it from kilograms into grams. divided by 181 cubic centimetres, gives us a higher density there of 7.7 .7 grams per cubic centimetre. So, if we have these densities worked out, we then need to try and link those to layers within the Earth. Now, stony meteorites are similar to the Earth's mantle. They're made of very similar uh, rocks and they've got a similar density as well to rocks near the top of the mantle. The iron meteorites are representative of the Earth's core, outer core and inner core, because we know about the magnetic field and also the higher density that we find at depth. Although these uh, the actual density of the inner core and outer core is higher than 7.7, .7, but remember that the pressure 
in the core is enormous. And finally, the really weird one of the stony iron meteorites. They're beautiful meteorites, but really very unusual. And we think they represent the boundary between the mantle and the core, because that density is between those two values. Okay, as we watch the moonrise and the sunset, we can see that there are differences within each of these planets in the different layers that we can work out from meteorites. And we can also see there are some similarities between the different planets. In particular, the layered structure that's, as a, that's there as a result of the different densities of materials that make up these planets. When planets are forming, the denser materials will sink down in towards their core. The less dense materials will be left behind near the surface. For example, if we really want to go and find uh, lots and lots of gold, we, we probably need to get to the core. Sadly, we can't. What we need to do next is move it on to start studying uh, the moon in a lot more detail. But that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.